Hi, and welcome to cookwithtom.com. Today we're going to be making artisan bread. Now, the reason we're starting with bread for the very first episode is bread is the staple of life. Not only that, but by learning how to make a good loaf of bread, you're helping develop building blocks for other recipes that we're working on throughout the season. Now, bread is a simple combination of flour, water, yeast, uh, it's a little bit of salt and sugar, and which when you use the proper food chemistry, you will develop a fantastic flavor. Let's get started. First things first, let's talk about yeast. Although this recipe only calls for one quarter teaspoon of instant rice yeast, it's important to remember that the older your yeast, the less active organisms there are inside the kernel. Therefore, always use fresh, the freshest yeast you can find. It's also important to remember that you should proof your yeast. Now, what does that mean? That means taking your yeast, adding your yeast to your mixing bowl, and then adding three quarters of a cup of warm water. Now, by warm water, I mean about 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the water will help dissolve the yeast, allowing those active organisms in there to go out and look for something to feed on. Therefore, we'll put in a tablespoon of sugar. Let, the, let that yeast find those sugar molecules and dissolve and work for about 10 minutes. So here's what's happening. Right now, the sugar is floating through the water. This yeast sees that and goes, ah! That's food, like a dog that hasn't eaten in three days. It is attacking that sugar like crazy. Now, we want the yeast to, to survive and live and propagate because when it eats the sugar, it puts off two things, alcohol and CO2. Now, we'll cook the alcohol off later, but the CO2 is what we use to make sure that our bread rises. But we, won't, we don't want it to rise too fast, so to slow the process, we'll have one and a half teaspoons of just regular old table salt. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that our once clear water is covered in yeast. What's happening is as the yeast is eating that sugar, it's rising to the top with the CO2 that's attached to it. This is good. It, it means our yeast is working. So, we have now done what you call proofing the yeast. Now that we know that our yeast is ready to go, it's time to start adding the flour. Now, what we'll add is three cups of flour or about 15 ounces. Now this recipe calls for about uh, 10 ounces of, of liquid. Now that means about a 66 to 70 percent saturation. I'll talk a little bit more about that as, as we're waiting for it to rise. But remember that, 70 percent saturation. Three cups, goes into the batch. Now there's a piece here that bread makers have to their advantage. The yeast they've been using is typically c cultivated from a culture which has been used for years, sometimes 50 plus years. Now, we're going to cheat in order to get the flavor that comes from a traditional yeast culture in our yeast, which is essentially brand new today. Plus, the flavors that already exist in lager mimic or taste a lot like good old American bread. Now, be careful there. Don't use too dark of a lager and also don't use ale because then what will happen is your bread will taste more like beer and less like bread. Now the last little trick we can use so that our bread tastes more like bread that's been used with a sourdough starter for years and years is add a tablespoon of regular old white vinegar. Why vinegar? The vinegar adds a little bit of tanginess that you normally would get over the fermentation process in, in typical sourdough breads. But because, again, we don't have the time, the vinegar balances out and it adds that little bit of tanginess that we otherwise wouldn't have. Now that we've got all of our ingredients, we can lower the mixer and give it the spurs. Now it's important to start out slow until all of the liquid has been incorporated. But once the bread has formed a nice ball of dough, give the spurs. Now you want to run your mixer for about 5 to 10 minutes until a nice ball of dough forms. Here's what happens. The proteins or glutens in the flour, with, when they hit the water, they start to interact. Now what they're trying to do is cross-link and create one big long string of gluten. By mixing it, it allows those glutens to become a little untangled and, and to allow themselves to cross-link. Now there's an important step we'll follow a little later that will help the glutens to further cross-link. 
But this is important. Once the ball of dough is formed, stop mixing. Because this recipe has a pretty high concentration of water versus flour, again about 70%, the, the ball of dough is not going to be as firm as you might find in a standard bread recipe. This is a good thing. Now, traditional commercial kitchens have proof boxes. What we're trying to accomplish here is the perfect blend of heat and humidity in your oven. And to use that as a proof box, yeast loves heat. Yeast also loves humidity. Place a narrow pan on the bottom rack. Once the water starts to boil, Take it to your oven, then pour your freshly boiled water into the pan. As you can see, there's quite a bit of steam coming off that. We'll want to shut the oven door and let that sit for about 10 minutes. Two things are happening right now. The steam is rising, moisturizing, and humidifying the oven. Also, that steam, as it comes up, is causing evaporation, which causes the oven to cool down slightly and create a more even temperature in the oven. While we're waiting for that to happen, take a regular old standard dishcloth, wet it down with uh, a nice temperature water, just medium heat, wring it out so it's not too wet, and put that over the top of our bowl. This is going to do two things. It's going to help contain moisture within our bowl, allowing our bread to rise. Once the oven's had about 10 minutes to become uniform in humidity and heat, open your oven, grab your dough, and put it into the oven. Now, it's important to let your bread rise for at least an hour and a half to two hours. Here's what happens. The yeast that we put in earlier is eating like crazy, finding all the sugars and starches and breaking that down into alcohol and CO2. This helps our bread to rise, but when we bake it, we'll have nice big pockets of air. Also, there are naturally occurring enzymes in flour that as they sit in contact with water, take those long strands of gluten that we talked about earlier, and they cut them into smaller pieces. Now the benefit here is the smaller pieces are easier to untangle and put together into a straight line. So the longer you can afford to let your bread rise, the, the better crumb we'll have at the end of our baking process.